Today, I've got a Photomator quick tip for you. A lot of people ask how, as you're doing all of these edits, can you prevent your photo library from... Violet, what are you doing now? You're blowing up! I feel funny! You know, ballooning out of control. And honestly, there's only one way to get to the bottom of this mystery, and it's kind of time consuming, but for you, I did it. I went through every single edit in all of Photomator and I applied them all one at a time. And then I took a recording of how big the sidecar file was for each of those edits individually, dumped them into a spreadsheet, and here are the results for the most space consuming edits you can make to your Photomator documents. Pull up the handy dandy spreadsheet. If you take a look at these file sizes, I've got them sorted largest at the top, smallest at the bottom. So looking here at the bottom, now the total file size is measured in bytes. That's the left column here. And vignette is the one that I saw was the smallest of the edits. And so I'm using that as a baseline as how small a sidecar file can possibly be by itself. Now, 345 kilobytes, to put that in perspective, you would need about 12 of these sidecar files to add up to the size of about one normal iPhone photo. So very small. So you can see we've got a few that I would consider here at the bottom that I would say are your absolute baseline. These are very, very tiny edits, minimal effect on the size of your photo. We've got vignette, three-way color, color mono, HSV, and if you're paying attention, these are basically all of the normal edits you would see in that color adjustments paddle on Photomator. Even when you get to like curves and grain, I know these look big in proportion, but we're still talking kilobytes here. Like these files are tiny, these adjustments are tiny. It's not until we get to number 11 that we start to see the two main culprits that really are responsible for ballooning your Photomator file size. The first are the pixel-based selection tools. So you can see that's select sky, select subject, select brush, select background. All of those are actually selecting individual pixels in your image, which means the data behind them is fully just gonna depend on how big your image is and how many pixels it ends up selecting. So sometimes, like in this instance, select sky, reasonably small. But as your image gets bigger or maybe more of your image is sky, the only limit to some of these is the full image size itself. LUT was a little surprising. I tried a bunch of different LUTs and they seem to be consistently sized. So I'm imagining that's just the size of a default cube file uh, when you import it. Here's more select, select, select. And then here we have the top four. Uh, if you're curious, base size is just the size of the image file I was working with, so that's entirely separate. I just wanted to see how close we were to actually fully replicating the size of the image. And as you can see, playing with the brush, for example, you can select most of the image and the layer that you select with the brush is about the size of the entire image. The repair tool, very similar. In this case, I was a little surprised that the repair tool doubles the size of the image. I'm not sure exactly what I did with the repair tool that caused it to be big, but I did notice that both with clone and repair, it fully depends on how much of the image you're actually painting, cloning, and repairing. And so those could be very small if you're just painting out something small in the background, or if you're messing with the whole image, could be, I mean, at least in this case, double, triple, quadruple the size of the image itself. The one that I think will surprise everybody is denoise. And my assumption here is that they are adding bit depth to do denoise. Now that might not be the case, but there's got to be something like that going on to be able to get to, I mean, five times the original image file size. The other that wasn't available on the version of Photomator that I was testing this on, because I was stranded at a car dealership using my laptop for this test, is the D-band. And D-band is very similar to denoise, and I'm pretty sure that D-band is similar. It uses some increase to the bit depth or something like that to make it so there's extra data to work with to remove the banding in the photo. And then, of course, the one that I don't think anybody is surprised by is super resolution. Now we're not quite to 10x the size of the photo, but it's pretty close. And I think that makes sense to everybody. You're literally increasing the resolution of the photo using AI. So of course you have to save that data somewhere. Okay, that's it for this one. If you haven't checked out the Photomator Masterclass, it's running right now, link in the description below. And if you have other questions about how you can use Photomator, Pixelmator, or anything else about photography, hit me up. I'm always happy to help. Okay, we'll catch you on the next one.